Today in the news, we got the disappearance of Tan and Beige and a whole lot of AMD. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Noctua. The company is known for the quality and craftsmanship of every single one of their coolers, from the supersized NHD15 to their tiny super compact L9Is. Who am I kidding? They're just popular because of the Beijing Tan fans. That's pretty much their whole branding. So what if they completely remove that? And no, I'm not talking about their Chromax line. What if they completely removed the fan and you had a passive cooler? Not that. Well, the company has been working on a fanless heatsink for a while now, and it looks like it was just accidentally listed on Newegg. It's called the Noctua NHP1, P probably for passive, and damn, that looks like a chonker. In terms of compatibility, we can expect the same as pretty much every other cooler in the market, support for current motherboards, and a support going back five to six years. And in terms of heat dissipation, well, it's said that it was recommended recommended from low to moderate power dissipation. So something like a 5600X, uh, I can see that working, but not with anything more power hungry, like a 3700X or anything above. Also, expect high temperatures on your CPU running right up to that throttling temperature, since that's pretty much a given when talking about passive coolers. I know that fanless tech did add the 9900K and 3950X as supported uh, CPUs, but I don't think that's the case. Anyways, it was designed for no fan applications, which is pretty impressive. And of course, we have the price, which is 100 bucks. We don't know if that's the official price, but that's what it was listed on Newegg. Personally, I think that's actually a pretty good price, considering how much that I've paid before for things like, you know, AIO coolers. It seems like quite the deal if you're looking for a, you know, ultra sleek passive cooler to put on your system. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Next up, let's get some CPU news up in here. A couple of days ago, Gamers Nexus revealed some of the leaks that they've received for AMD's upcoming AM5 platform. Well, he showed it to us just basically to uh, draw a comparison to other leaks that are currently circulating about AM5 and the socket, of course. Specifically, uh, the configuration for the amount of PCIe lanes on the CPU, which is different from the current information available and what he received about a year ago. Now, that's fine. AMD might have changed something, some of those specification. In fact, Steve thinks that the current information is more likely to be accurate. But then he showed this little guy, a block diagram of AMD's CPU layout for Raphael, AKA the next step in the Zen architecture. Now, as we have kind of come to accept, it looks like Ryzen 7000 or whatever mainstream name AMD gives to Zen 4, it looks like that generation will have a maximum of 16 cores and 32 threads. The dies slash CCDs are still eight cores and we don't see a third die on this diagram. We can also see the code name for the die itself, which is Durango. But what actually got my interest is right here the I.O. die. So for the core chiplets, AMD evolved their process from, you know, seven nanometers to seven nanometers plus. As for the I.O. die, AMD stuck with a larger 12 nanometer process. Well, it looks like for Zen 4, it's gonna go down to a seven nanometer plus process. How can I say that, or how do I know that? Well, the I.O. die seems to have been planned to house integrated graphics. Also, if this releases in 2022, it would make sense for it to have RDNA 2 graphics, which are also on seven nanometer plus. And even if they stick with Vega, Vega is currently at seven nanometer plus. It's basically built in with the current Zen 3 chips that we have for our uh, APUs. This could mean that every single Ryzen model for AMD could have integrated graphics, which is pretty cool unless they raise the price because of that. Of course, they could always disable the IGP in case the yields are bad, but still, the option should still be there. I'm so glad that we finally see light at the end of the Vega tunnel, or at least I hope so, because if I get to the end of that tunnel and Vega is still there, I'm gonna be mad. 
And lastly, for all that Zen 4 CPU talk, there's been designs of the CPU heat spreader for Ryzen 7000 floating around the interwebs. The person who made the render is called Executable Fix over on Twitter, and he claims to have inside information on the design. So this is his 3D render of the Ryzen 7000 heat spreader. Okay, I know it might seem unbelievable, but Intel has done something similar in the past for some of their CPUs, just not necessarily in the mainstream. I mean, maybe the these indents are meant to help with the mounting mechanism. Who knows? After that, Executable Fix went ahead and updated his design with new information. Apparently those cutouts, yeah, they're gonna be elevated to allow space for the capacitors and such. Now, let me tell you why that's a bad idea. Four reasons. Thermal paste, thermal paste, thermal paste, thermal compound. We obviously don't have confirmation of the design by anyone really, not AMD or not anyone else corroborating this design, but it is a quite interesting one. Maybe it's built like that to center the CPU on the LGA socket. That wouldn't really explain the cutout though, but anyways, in any case, it's definitely a shocking one. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And that's pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about this little cooler right here. So cute compared to the NHD 15. In any case, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next fan. That didn't, on the next one, take care. Hello and welcome to my review of the uh, NHD15 from Noctua. It is very, very sharp on all the edges. I absolutely hate this mounting mechanism. Um, oh, God damn it. Pull, pull. It is better than a lot of other manufacturers, but yeah, I don't like it.